you know, he probably was right. Um, I would insulate the power grid immediately. I would get a budget of $2 billion to protect our power grid from what you had just mentioned, an EMP attack, which is an electromagnetic pulse attack, somebody detonating a nuke in the atmosphere, which blankets the country and shuts us down, or an X flare from the sun, which happened in the 1800s, shut down the telegraph system. It could happen again today. If we get hit directly with a big flare from the sun, and mark my word, one day that will happen. We have got to get our power system insulated or we are up a creek. This country and this planet cannot survive without power and electricity. You're off the air. I'm off the air. Your ATMs don't work. You can't pump gasoline. They are predicting, William Forstian in his books, One Second After, they're predicting that 90% of the Americans would die within one year within one year, if the power grid goes down. And I think those numbers are pretty accurate. Well, I'm not particularly worried about a foreign enemy using an EMP. I mean, I know it could be done. It could lock, knock out limited areas, cause a lot of carnage over thousands of square miles. And for years. But if you look at a Carrington event, as you know, that's happened before with the sun. And we know it happens routinely. I mean, that is a probability, not a if but when it's going to blow out large sections of our power grid and it could be continent wide even worldwide for folks that don't know what a carrington event is george you're an expert on it with all the guests you've interviewed uh, tell them how serious this is well carrington events is very serious and again back in the 1800s we had a major league x flare from the sun which fried the only electrical system we had at the time and that was our telegraph system it cooked it it was so big that the metal in the railroad lines all started melting. It was, it was unbelievable. If, a, if one that size hit us today, we're done. It's, it's all over. Uh, we've got to insulate it. They're estimating about $2 billion would protect the grid from these two kinds of events, EMPs or X flares. Come on. For what they spent on bailouts, this is chump change. Let's fix the power grid and keep this country going during times of crises. Sounds like I'm running, doesn't it? Well, I tell you, it just makes me basically be speechless to think about this. I want to go to some phone calls. George Norrie is our guest. Separately, what do you think about Donald Trump in your gut? Um, and where do you think he's going to be in this whole Republican nomination? Do you think he's going to get it? Do you think Carson's really beating him in some national polls? I think what we might have is, uh, and I'm saying this based on instinct and, uh, you know, political knowledge. I think the Trump influence is going to wane. I think it's happening now. Uh, he hit a plateau, and I think it's coming down now. I think the reality of... Who is Donald Trump and what does this all mean is starting to sit in. Um, the only alternative it appears right now is Ben Carson. I think that's going to wane too. Um, as some of my guests have predicted all along, Jeb Bush comes in through the back door and will probably get that Republican nomination. And as ludicrous as it might sound, three years, I mean, another Bush three times, and he's so far behind in the polls. Uh, but I think he's got that possibility. And as for the Democratic side, um, even though Bernie Sanders is showing some strength, I think Hillary, my prediction, will get that nomination. And um, so you may end up still with a Hillary Jeb Bush runoff. Ugh. And there you go. I mean, ugh, is right. And it shows how out of touch the establishment is. They try to force feed these two groups that vacation together, that call each other family, that have foundations together. I mean, we're not North Korea where we have hereditary leaders. We're not England. No, not at all. Why don't you do a poll for me on uh, InfoWars, throw my name in against Hillary and uh, Bernie Sanders, and let's see what the, where the numbers show. That's a great idea. Let's put an InfoWars poll up. Uh, ask Kurt and Emma to do that. or I know Kurt runs the poll. Uh, but right now, as soon as we can, who would you vote for uh, of these choices? And let's say George Norrie. Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, who would you vote for on the Democratic ticket if that was your only choice? 
Who would you vote for on the Democratic ticket? Just leave it like that. Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, George Norrie. And I would imagine with our audience, about 95% uh, will be saying George Norrie. But we'll Maybe see. So. see I, I can't do it on coast to coast because it's too skewered for me. But uh, yours may be a little different, but you might be right. That's then a great idea. To, and then we'll publish the results. That's right. Give it to Matt Drudge. If he puts it up as a headline that I'm beating them in your InfoWars poll, well, then maybe I may take a take a. Now stab that's at an it. idea, I, uh, Drudge. I guarantee if you enter the race, he would put up a poll and then say, "Who do you support, George Norrie or these other sure. people?" Uh, you know, I could also. I've done this before. I've gone to uh, Zogby. I've gone to uh, New York Times poll. Mason Dixon. We paid for seven or eight polls uh, for them to be conducted uh, as newsmakers and to actually get those answers. I could go out and do a poll of those three too. Scientific. Uh, to see what folks would say. And I have a sneaking suspicion that you'd even win uh, in one of those, just uh, hitting the general public. Let's go to some phone calls uh, here. Uh, let's talk to Frank in North Carolina. You're on the air with George Noring. Yeah, I call, gentlemen. Um, you know, my understanding is that the CIA actually created, or at least popularized the term, conspiracy theorist as a way Basically, to you know, discredit anybody that questioned the official establishment uh, view or story accounting of things, and you know, you look into um, uh, you know, they say, well, these people they're attacked. Basically, the people in our government, the president, Obama, Bush, whoever it's going to be, you know, they're attacked and criticized for incompetence and having bad ideas, lack of experience, you know, all these things. When in actuality. Uh, they're, they're really probably more successful than we think in carrying out the, the chess moves of their masters. Sure, I mean, no, absolutely. Fine. They always act like it's an aptitude. And at the top, it's not an aptitude. It is a program uh, being implemented. Now, they do some inept things. Nobody's perfect. Uh, but I tend to agree with you. But, yes, it was declassified decades ago. That the term conspiracy theorist was deployed in the 60s against people that questioned government. Uh, George, your comments on that? Yeah, Frank is absolutely correct, Alex. I mean, uh, it, it was organizations like the CIA that established the conspiracy theorist topic and title to discredit everybody, to make everybody sound like they were strange and wackos. And as you know, when I heard that phrase back 13 years ago as I was getting into Coast to Coast, I too felt that way. To me, it sounded like, other than the Kennedy assassination story, I thought, you know, you talk about these conspiracies and things that are going on. These people are a little strange. Well, it took a while, several years doing the program where I realized that, no, no, no. It's the people who believe in the conspiracy theories who are the smart ones, who are the accurate ones. And I think this has backfired on the CIA. There's no doubt about that. I think it has. And certainly they try to give attention to the most whacked out schizophrenics online and really some sad people. Uh, you know, who think the world is flat and that the Easter bunnies are real, but they're not indicative of us, for, you know, myself for 20 years talking about the NSA, and then Snowden comes out and says it and is a hero, uh, but then the establishment still says that I'm a kook because I was 18 years ahead of Snowden. We'll be back with George Norrie and more calls. Final segment with George Norrie. We got Max Kaiser coming up, but I'll continue with your calls until Max Kaiser gets on with us. Adam in Canada wants to talk to George. I'm your host, Alex Jones, obviously. Uh, Adam, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Thanks for uh, having me on again. Uh, I just wanted to say, George, uh, I think it's a great idea for you to run for the Democratic ticket. And what you could do is strike a deal with Trump. Uh, if you win, he could be your VP. If he wins, you could be his. You know, I was actually thinking, uh, if I got elected, if I ran, of picking... Hold on now. Condoleezza Rice. Um, she had marching orders during the Bush administration. So many of the things that happened then were not her fault. But uh, she is a sharp person. And, uh, you know, she skews the women vote. She skews the African-American vote. Uh, and she's a smart person. Um, might not be a bad selection as VP. What do you think? And she gave, and she gave Willie Brown the warning not to fly before 9-11. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, my goodness, George, you are something else. Adam, I appreciate your call. Uh, let's talk to Kevin in Florida. You're on the uh, air. Go ahead with George Norrie. Thank you, Alex. Um, my actual, uh, I'm actually fellow conspiracy theorist there, so I'm in good company. Uh, my actual question for George was, uh, 
how much uh, aviation and or medical and scientific technology that we're using right now have we gained from uh, like extraterrestrial information that we have found out because it, it seems to me like there's too much credible information from guys like Jesse Marceau and Bob Lazar who actually are quoted as saying they witnessed these things uh, that we did all that we're doing right now with scientific and aviation technology on your on our own. I just wanted to get your take on that. And, of course, the late Philip Corso, military uh, expert, and uh, he had been in the military uh, all his career. Uh, he was assigned the project of giving uh, reverse-engineered technology to companies uh, back after the Roswell episode to get them to work on things like laser technology and chips and things like that for computers. Uh, I think if one is a believer in extraterrestrial visitations, and in this vast universe, there's no question in my mind that we've been visited. Uh, the Zachariah Sitchin theory that we may have been seeded by ETs, very probable. I think that we've gotten some technology. I don't think it's one of those kinds of deals where they say, here, we're going to give you this technology. Now let us abduct all these people. I think this probably came as a process of, as of us finding some crashed craft. And sure, so it's not Eisenhower at Area 51 hanging out with him. Thank you, Kevin. I want to get one more in before George has got to go in about a minute and a half. Uh, real fast, Sean, go ahead from Michigan. Yeah, um, yeah, I found some strange stuff when I Googled my last name because I, I end up finding out I'm a grandchild of Project Paperclip. The top therapist oh. on the Hadron Collider is my last name. He's well, that's amazing. we got to jump here. What about the Hadron Collider in closing? We talked about it earlier, but, I mean, that's just kind of an Atlantis example, isn't it? George? It, it sure is. Uh, the Hadron Collider um, may have been developed to get great information about the universe, but let's hope they don't make a mistake and create a wormhole that will gobble us all up, Alex. Beyondbelief.com is where folks can find your TV show. Uh, everybody knows about the radio show, but the TV show is a big hit as well, beyondbelief.com. George, thank you so much for spending all this time with us. Look forward to hanging out again with you in person like we did at your show in Toronto. Thanks, my friend. Love you, Alex. Love you well. too. We'll be back third hour, seconds away.